Today, it happened. The governor of Louisiana toured his coastline, then proclaimed the oil slick has come ashore. We saw heavy oil in Pasolutra and South Pass. In the wetlands, in the fragile marshes of Louisiana, miles of it and still spreading. Here at the South Pass of the Mississippi River, it, it looks to be like some mix of oil on this marshland. State, local, even federal officials are now wondering really what this kind of material will mean for the ecosystem here. And this is what we came back with, a far cry from the thin black oily sheen that's been already impacting the shoreline. What you're looking at here is a deadly blanket. This is where the fish come to eat the bugs, the frogs. All the critters that, that start in this marsh are now dead. We're sitting here hoping something doesn't happen that we see happen in front of our eyes and we ain't doing a damn thing about it. Don't they realize our tax dollars pay their salaries? Anybody else would have been fired. The core would have been wiped out and yet we put up with this shit year after year. There's no one who wants this thing over more than I do. You know, I'd like my life back. We actually got inside to, of uh, Hassan's apartment. In the living room, we saw a heavy-duty paper shredder. It was left open. Next to the shredder, we saw prayer mats. On the kitchen table, we saw foreign currency and a book entitled Dreams and Interpretation. In the utility room, we saw a shoebox full of vitamins and medication, including prescription drugs that Hassan had prescribed for himself. If there is going to be a tornado, Kelly is uh, right in the spot where it would be. I can pretty much see the cloud base. Whoa, there was some good lightning. Wow, that lightning Randy. bolt Randy. was incredible out ahead of you just then. There's a little bit of a lowering uh, right straight in front of the camera, right where that lightning strike was. And Kelly, it seemed at times during that commercial break that there was a lowering, potentially a funnel. Uh, the exact same thing. Uh, you can watch there. And you'll see just to the left of the of the reflector. You can see the smoke. This is all live right now. And now we see the flames. Kelly, can you describe what you're seeing? Uh, right now, it looks like an oil tanker going up in flames. Uh, they said that the lightning struck this oil tank and it exploded. Storm specialist Carl Parker is also joining me now to talk more about lightning and how frequently something like this can happen, Carl. Well, Bonnie, you know, you've got a tremendous amount of energy and also temperature in lightning. It's not very big. Generally, a lightning bolt is about as wide as a pen or a pencil. Flash flooding in Texas breaking right now. We are looking at Palacios, Texas, as the flood threat is intensifying. You see the barricades are up. We've got some moderate to heavy rain right now. We're in downtown Houston. We've been watching this uh, manhole cover over here, and it, it, it's, it's trying to pop up and down. It's got a lot of pressure from the rain. A lot of the homes look like they're probably getting water in them right now. We're getting reports now flooding along the Katy Freeway. Near spot on. We've got a lot of uh, deep gulf moisture that's going to be coming inland. We're looking live at Palacios, Texas, as driver after driver tries to navigate through this high water here. Our crews have been working round the clock, uh, setting up barricades, attending low water crossing. After explosive and often cynical questions from the men and women of the jury to Jody Arias. Why did you wait for so long to tell the truth? It took a long time for me to get to this point. Now we wait. And guess what? We just got breaking news just in. <laughs> Turns out that they have still more questions. Will there be more on Jody's lies? Why should we believe you now? Lying is, isn't typically something I just do. Arius, Travis Alexander's family, the attorneys, the judge and jury, now stand by for a return to the stand. At stake, Jody Arias' life or death. This test um, really is only as good as the person who is telling or filling it out, right? And so started the unraveling of the defense's expert witness. That's true. So if they're lying, then the test is not very good. That's correct. Dr. Richard Samuels, claiming that Jody Arias suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and a form of dissociative amnesia. It could be uh, a killing, it, it could be a bomb going off. It could be uh, physiological changes that occur create a flow of chemicals to the hippocampus, which blocks it from storing memory. Prosecutor Juan Martinez at it again, trying to poke holes in Samuel's testimony. In this case, we do have a circumstance where you know the defendant's lying and she lied on the test, right? Well, her answers didn't reflect what we ultimately discovered. Right, so she lied, right? 
Well, it's all the same thing. It's just different versions. I can keep my life straight. Yes. I can keep my life straight. I can keep my life straight. I can keep my life straight. By now, the questions about Jody Arias's memory, the fog, her lies, all come to mind every time we see her in court. Well, it's all the same thing. It's just different versions. I can keep my life straight. But some paint a different picture of Jody. Jody is a very intelligent very artistic, um, very compassionate. I mean, she's got so many dreams and compassionate, and it all involves helping people. Back in January, in session on True TV, sat down with Donovan Baring, a friend of the Arias family. It's a very good family. Baring told us Jody is caring. Jody has true emotions in that courtroom. I mean, when you see her cry, those are true tears. Those are tears from Jody, and she's feeling something to make her cry. On the stand, one of Jody's exes said similar things. Jody was a very uh, <clears throat> irresponsible, caring, loving person. Now, though, what ultimately matters in this case is what the men and women in these seats think of Jody. The person that I had known. Um, was a very quiet, uh, soft-spoken, gentle person. And so that person that I knew, I, I could imagine could have done something like that, like that. In their hands, her fate, her future, and mainly her life. I knew that I loved him and I cared about him, I cared about him, I cared about him.